Hello everyone, welcome to the GUI Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and related topics. So in today's session on climatology, we are going to learn about a very interesting phenomena that happens in polar regions. So that is called polar vortex. So what is this vortex or whirling all about and why it happens only in polar regions? So let's discuss that in details. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand this concept of this polar vortex. Now what is this polar vortex and why it was in news in 2019 and what is important to know about this? So there are two words here. One is polar itself and the other is vortex. So what is this vortex all about and where is it coming from? So vortex is basically this whirling action. Remember whenever you take lots of water in a bucket and you keep whirling it. So what happens? There is this whirl created, right? Even in your kitchen sink, you can try. So this is a whirlwind or whirlpool that is created. Even in your washing machine, you can find it out. So that is called vortex. It's a whirling action. Now, what is this whirling action and how it is related to polar areas? That is where this creation of polar vortex happens. So let's understand this concept in terms of this entire climatology and its impact on the entire climatology. So polar vortex is largely the area of low pressure and a cold air. Now the first line itself seems to be very contradictory because we have learned in climatology that low pressure is associated with warm air. So what is this? This is low pressure and cold air, how it can be? So let's understand. And it is basically where the area itself is clear. It is the polar area. So it will have cold air itself. But why this low pressure then? So let's understand and clarify this point that it is low pressure area, but it is cold area surrounding the Earth's north and south poles. And this is referred to as the polar vortex. So the term vortex basically is what? Clockwise or counterclockwise depending upon the northern and southern hemisphere. So in northern hemisphere it is anticlockwise and in southern hemisphere it is clockwise. This kind of wind movement, very fast wind movement happens at the poles specifically in the stratospheric belt that is upper atmosphere that is important to remember so what happens often during winter in northern hemisphere remember now it is winter in northern hemisphere when we say it means sun's movement is southwards right so this is this oscillation that leads to this so the polar vortex become less stable and expands and further if we say this area if this expands what will happen this cold air will come to these land areas and it will bring lots of chilly winters, negative temperatures. So this is why it was in concern for many of the countries like Canada, US, right? That this keeps happening in certain years where there is this polar vortex migration to these land areas. So this is important to understand that how this entire polar vortex is formed, how it functions, why is it important? But is it a new concept? No. First time it was discussed even in as back as 1853 in an article that is Living Age where it was discussed as a fact that this also happens. This kind of phenomena is there where you have upper atmospheric circulation which is kind of a whirling wind which is there at the pole. Right. But in details, it was not discussed. So let's understand in details this entire formation, the process behind it and why it is important for all of us. So before we go ahead, let's understand this through this video that is here. So what you observe in this video is that polar vortex is there at the polar area and it is persistent large scale upper level low pressure area almost about 1000 kilometers in diameter. So diameter is huge that you see, right? And what is there? The in northern hemisphere, if you observe in this particular video, it is counterclockwise rotation, right? So polar vortices that we say right in the northern hemisphere as well in southern hemisphere, they rotate and they are very fast moving, right? And at times they also weaken. Now you understand that why it is formed and how it is contained only in polar area. Remember polar area is cold and then you have subtropical air which is largely warm. So it is like cold air and warm air mixing. So there is 
front formation as we have learned in the air front as well right so this is important to understand that how it operates and what are the basic ideas furthermore so now let's discuss this in terms of the conceptualization and formation now i understand that many people get confused that how this low pressure system is formed in the polar areas so why this polar vortex is created as a low pressure system and how even if there is so much of cold air. So let's understand what happens. Now remember we have already discussed in detail this Hadley cell, Ferrell cell, polar cell. So not going into details of this Hadley and Ferrell cell again, just a simple circulation model is there on your screen. So if you observe what is happening, this is that line which is called tropopause, which is about this 12 to 15 kilometers and it is the dividing line between troposphere and the stratosphere, right? So what happens? This height continuously keeps going down as we go towards the pole. So at the pole, the tropopause is about 8 kilometers, that is between 7 and 9 kilometers, right? And it is maximum about 15 kilometers at the equatorial region. That is the basic idea, basic structure that we have discussed. Now what happens? The air from the feral cell and the polar cell, these easterlies and westerlies meet at this junction that is the 60 degree north right we have discussed about it and this is called polar front and also what you find there is polar front jet stream created because of this mixing of warm and cold air right so we have discussed this this kind of front formation so this is warm air front this is cold air front and this is that 60 degree north where this jet stream is formed which is called polar front jet stream remember the jet stream concept and if you have not watched the video on jet stream please go to the playlist and also clarify your details on this particular jet stream formation but for now when we are discussing this formation of this particular polar vortex let's understand how it is created and why it is a low pressure system why do we say that now it is important to remember here that it is not the lower atmosphere, it is the upper atmosphere. Can you see this image? It is above the tropopause. It is in the stratosphere and many times also exceeds stratosphere, right? So it is in the upper atmosphere as we see. That is the first point. Now, when you see this warm front, it obviously will go up, right? And cold front will dominate here. So that is what warm and cold air has this property. So what happens? One branch of this is actually going here and subsiding down what you see in this particular image this circulation happens in this particular area right it goes up and then again subsides down on the pole that's where it is high pressure right but another branch reaches tropopause and goes to upper atmospheric circulation which is warm air in nature in context to if you see the polar area right so this warm air which is relatively warmer than what you have cold air in the lower troposphere or atmosphere what you say right so this warm air obviously will rise up and it will go to this particular belt where it will start doing this whirling action due to coriolis force as we remember and remember about coriolis force it is strongest where at the poles so if Coriolis force is strongest at the poles, this warm air that rises up will start rotating counterclockwise in northern hemisphere if you see, right? And that is how this polar vortex is formed. And that is important to understand the formation of polar vortex is this warm front that rises up in the upper atmosphere and one branch is actually subsiding down. So tropopause is the dividing line, right? That's why people get confused that even if it is at North Pole, why this low pressure this low pressure is because of this warm air front that goes up there and in context to this area it is actually relatively more warm because the ground area is far 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 cool so relatively it is warmer if you observe in that way right so that is why it is low pressure and where is this low pressure sitting it is sitting on the lower atmosphere which is high pressure so very interesting phenomena is this polar vortex creation. Now when we have understood the mechanism of its formation through this warm front analysis and this polar front jet stream which keeps binding it, right? So another question that arises here is that why is it fixed to this pole? Why is it not moving here and there away from the pole? Now remember there is a guard, there is a gate here. So this is the gate, this is the guard that is polar front jet stream. It is like a guard, it is like a gate 
which does not allow this polar vortex to move away. So it is fixed in this particular zone, right? But at times when this guard is sleepy, remember night duty guards doze off to sleep. So when they're sleepy, this thief sneaks into the other areas, very interestingly. So when this weakens, remember, jet stream also weakens at certain time period. That is when this polar vortex gets time to actually intrude into certain areas where you find difficulty in the Midwest US, in the Canada, where lots of cold winds and negative temperatures are there. So that is what we need to discuss further more. So observe this particular two diagrams. When you have stable polar vortex and you have strong jet stream, it means the positions are fixed. So it is there clearly on the northern pole and it is now guided or bounded by this guard here that is strong jet stream, right? This is a normal situation, stable situation. But at times when there is weakening in the jet stream, when this is loosening up, right? Because you understand that there is a continuous north and south ward shift of the insulation and temperatures belt shift accordingly pressure belt also shift and remember jet stream is formed because of the drastic difference between these air masses right that is important so because of that this also weakens at times and when it weakens what happens this cold air moves southwards that you see in these particular loops remember that so what are the waves called Rossby waves so when these Rossby waves are weakened Right? It cannot contain this particular air and it starts going down. And that is when there starts a problem and that is where because of this polar vortex oscillation according to this arctic oscillation as we say, it starts happening. So this is where it impacts the land area. You see this entire Canada and Midwest US had lots of freezing temperatures and beyond freezing temperatures that leads to lots of trouble. So what you see is two statements, polar vortices are weakest during summer and strongest during winter. So remember jet stream also is stronger in winter and it is weak during this particular time period when you have summers, right? So what will happen? Obviously when you have weakening and again strong thing happening, there is a fluctuation, there is an oscillation. So during this anomaly, during fluctuation, this moves, this expands and many times you find that due to this weak jet stream, there is a cold air that rushes from this polar vortex, creating small whirls in particular areas, right? So these small whirls that are entering these entire anomalous systems leads to lots of trouble in the land areas, which is dangerous in terms of situation if you observe. Now, another thing that is associated to this polar vortex phenomena is the ozone depletion. Now, as you observe that this polar vortex is largely in stratosphere. And remember, stratosphere has maximum concentration of this ozone, as you know. Right? So what happens in the Antarctic polar vortex? Let's understand the chemistry. So chemistry of Antarctic polar vortex has created severe ozone depletion. Remember Antarctica has lots of ozone holes as we know. So nitric acid in the polar stratospheric cloud. Now remember this polar stratospheric clouds have nitric acid composition reacts with the CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons to form chlorine. Now remember this chlorine formation if you see here what is happening 70 degrees south that is close to pole so you find chlorine concentration actually increasing right so what happens chlorine concentrations build up during the polar winters right in the polar winters chlorine concentration rise and due to this ozone destruction starts happening when there is sunlight that returns in spring right so these clouds can only form at temperatures which are below 80 degrees C. So remember when it reaches that acute winter temperatures of minus 80 degrees C, that is when this chlorine, chlorine composition leads to this depletion of ozone. And since there is greater air exchange between Arctic and mid latitudes, ozone depletion at North Pole is much less. Now remember, Northern Pole has lots of mixing of air because of this land and ocean distribution. But because so much of land area is not available in Southern Pole or nearby, not much of exchange of air happens. So mostly that concentrated air in the polar vortex remains there. It doesn't change as it changes in the northern hemisphere. So that is why due to this persistently remaining chlorine, right, it actually leads to more ozone depletion in the southern portion than in the northern portion. So accordingly, the seasonal reduction of ozone levels over Arctic is usually as ozone dent. Now remember, there are two terms. In southern hemisphere that is in the 
Antarctic belt it is called ozone hole because it is larger while it is just called a dent ozone dent in the northern hemisphere or in the arctic belt that is the main reason so now you remember that how this polar vortex phenomena is also related to ozone depletion that is another important point to remember here so now when we have understood in details the polar vortex phenomena its impact its creation and all those nuances related to it in the sessions to come we are going to learn more on climatic classification and other topics of climatology as well so stay tuned stay safe all the best wishes